Alright lads, so today we are finally getting around to reviewing the newest power character in the game, the 5 star version of Barragon, Tyrant Aspiration. Very cool name by the way. Yesterday we did review Geo and I recommend you lads check that out if you want to know my opinion about that particular character. But for today's video, we're going to be focusing on this version of Barragon. And in the comments below, you lads can join in too. Let me know what you like to think about this character so we can start a discussion. Because I know right now he's a bit of a controversial one. Some people love him, some people hate him. Let me know where you lads stand. But with that said, let's start the review of the new five star version of Barragon in Bleach Brave Souls. <laughs> So Barragon is an Aranka Spartan with the Hollow Kill ability. He is an SP orientated character, so he is all about doing damage with his strong attacks. Now, in terms of his killer and attribute combination, he definitely fulfills a niche that doesn't need to be fulfilled because you obviously have a lot of great power Hollow Killers out there, but we haven't received a new one in quite a long time, actually, that he does have his place to stay for the most part if you are in need of a new power Hollow Killer, for example. Looking at his skills, though, you can see he comes with the following set of skills. Bruiser plus 20%, damage inflict at full stamina plus 20%, debilitator for 5 seconds, devastation 40%, diminisher for 10 seconds, we'll talk about that in a minute, frenzy plus 1, guard break, strong attack recharge minus 12%, so that does come built into the character because he does have a strong attack damage soul trait and also weakened defense. All of his attacks inflict weakening and drain, but his SA2, and his SA2 is a debuff move. And then if you look at his innate skills, he does get an extra 6% recharge, but only when at full stamina, freeze duration minus 100%, and also sprint to plus one. So what you can see as the character, um, he is all about doing damage at full stamina. He wants to stay at full stamina because two of his skills, damage inflicted at full stamina and also the extra recharge, is all based on him staying at full stamina. Which, lucky for him, he has a very easy time doing because he does have weakening and drain on basically all of his attacks. And I really do like that. This is actually the first premium character that we have received to receive double status ailment, which is kind of crazy because this is a really good combination of status ailment. In fact, it's literally the best one possible. Weakening and drain is an absolutely powerful powerful duo to have on any type of character and it's something like this that makes the character really good in my opinion. Additionally he has weakened defense and also the debuff skill which has been increased for 20 seconds which allows him to not only do more damage for himself but also your teammates. He's a character that is going to be doing good damage thanks to his basically 40% berserker and also with those two skills allow your entire team to do significantly more damage and I really like that. It allows him to become a team player but at the same time also doing some respectful damage himself. But how does he perform in actual games? game modes. Well, let's talk about it. The first one being Guild Quest. And as always, when we talk about Guild Quest, unfortunately, I can't show this character in gameplay right now, but I do know enough about the game to give you my opinion on it and how he will perform. Additionally, on the screen right now is an example team of what you can actually bring, and it is going to clear Guild Quest very easily. Now, one thing you need to keep in mind when it comes to this Barragon and Guild Quest is that the debuff skill that he does have, unfortunately, is actually classed as a melee attack. And of course, because he is a ranged character, you're going to be bringing him into the ranged Hollow Week of Guild Quest. And even even though he has a freeze immunity, which is great for this particular week, and also IT, unfortunately, because his SA2 is a melee character, it's going to be doing zero damage, literally one damage, because he doesn't have sharpshooter, he doesn't have ignore range resistance, it's going to mean he's going to only have two strong attacks to do damage, and that really does suck. Luckily, his SA2 still at least does something to the boss, that being, you know, the lower defense, but it is still like a massive oversight for this character that I'm not sure if Caleb even realized when actually making him, which really does suck. Luckily though, we know he weakening and draining over the attacks with the fact that he can still do some respectable damage and also the fact that he does have weakened defense. With weakening, by the way, if you get this character the T20, for example, give him full stamina damage, which will easily be able to keep, and also give him weakened defense, he will be able to be still a pretty good character for the ranged Hollow Week of Guild Quest. Not the best character, but still someone good enough to be used. But due to his SA2 basically doing no damage, you really need to invest in this character to make sure that his strong attacks that can do damage will be able to do a lot of damage. So, in my opinion, you would have to get him to at least SP level 10 and also T20 to make him really worthwhile in actual Guild Quests. Obviously, there are significantly better characters out there, but I still want to highlight the value this character does have in this particular Guild Quest, even though he does have a massive oversight, that being his SA2 not doing any damage. For Epic Raids, where well, he is currently a bonus for the Awakened Zyapro Epic Raid, he's actually a really powerful bonus when paired with someone like Kenpachi, and in future cases, whenever he becomes a bonus once more, he really shines when he has a very powerful character to go with, because in this case, Kenpachi is a massive damage powerhouse, and is definitely the better character to use for Epic Raids, but throwing one or two Barricans in there, 
you're going to be clearing significantly faster. And that's mainly due to the fact that, again, once more, the debuff effect lowering the defense, allowing yourself and most importantly, the Kennys in your team to do more damage is a very powerful combination. And again, once more, very similar to Guild Quest, Max links up this character, and you can give him an extra weak in defense. And once that Soul Bomb goes off, everyone is doing massive damage, especially when you use that SA2 in combination with your Soul Bomb. So for Epic Raids, the best way to look at him is not really a massive damage dealer. Unless you work on the character, he can definitely be that. But for the most part, he's going to be a support character, providing your team with more damage from that SA2 and also the Soul Bomb. And that's just going to allow you and your team to clear significantly faster, at least for the remaining of the Epic Raids. In the future, if he does become a bonus and he doesn't have killer and he doesn't have a good character to go with him the runs are definitely going to be slower but he himself can definitely put in the work for arena i actually really like this character in this particular game mode and i think he's actually unique to a certain extent because of how the character does play now keep in mind because his original soul trait was 20 percent strong attack damage that means in arena he does get the arena soul trait of strong attack recharge minus seven percent while also giving 90 sp at rank Five. And I think that's really good because it's going to make him a very useful link for your future power characters when used in Arena. But for himself, it means he actually is the only character in the game right now to get 67% recharge. And that's great because this character, again, does have an SA2 with a 40 second cooldown. So with that 67% recharge, you're going down to like a 12 second cooldown. And it means that SA2 is actually really good in this particular game mode because the attack itself is actually pretty good. It does provide some good crowd control, but the debuff actually affects everyone. Keep in mind, the debuff does not need to hit someone to affect it. The second you press the SA2, any enemy on the field is going to get affected by their debuff. And that's important to know because if you do any type of damage to a person or, again, apply a debuff to an enemy, they start moving. And arena maps are quite huge, so you get to the point that every time you use that SA2, any enemy on the field is going to start running towards you. And that allows you to get a bunch of mobs together so you can build back up your gauge. And the character itself, obviously, being an, a, a rank or a spada, means that he doesn't really have any solid counters out there. Of course, obviously, Tsukushima is going to absolutely destroy this character. Um, but regardless of that, he doesn't have to go through X dodge, right? There's not many characters out there that have 50% chance to dodge rankers. And it means you can use him against someone like Six Anniversary Aizen, someone like Arpa Gichigo, who he has killer against, and he can do quite well because the damage output from this character isn't anything to scoff at. It's just really that SA1 that does bring him down just a tad bit in arena itself and when you do get this character to arena level five he also does pick up poise so from arena when i was playing with him like he wasn't anything super broken he wasn't anything super amazing but i was kind of liking the way he was playing i think he's actually a lot more enjoyable in arena since he does actually have that extra bit of recharge and at least with that sa2 you're always going to have that deep effect active so any enemy that's alive is going to just keep getting affected by that debuff allowing for you and your team to do more damage so for arena nothing crazy broken but very solid performance all things it is. For IT and IZ, this character, again, is a very solid character. For IZ, a lot of times when you are bringing a character like this, you're more so carrying the pot characters. And I don't think he's going to be that good for a carry. Sure, if you have a max percentage, you can definitely do that. But 1 out of 5, he's a very slow character. He isn't a character that you're going to be clearing very fast of. It's a, definitely a slower pace compared to some of the newer characters out there. But he can definitely clear it very safely for the most part. Because, again, keep in mind his damage output and this character in general is all about being at full stamina, which you can easily do thanks to his SA1, 3, and also Nad strength. For Inheritance Strouds, again, it's very solid. He does have the SA1 and 3 that can inflict weakening. Would have really preferred if that SA2 can also inflict weakening or drain for the most part. Because Inheritance Shards, it's all about inflicting status elements. And this character, his SA2, which is a Vortex move, would have been perfect for inflicting status elements. But because it is a debuff effect, it doesn't have any status elements whatsoever. Which, again, once more, is something that I really would have liked to see Caleb change in the future. Or at the very least, if they would have done it with this character. It would have been significantly better. But again, the survivability in this character is definitely nothing to scoff at. The weakening and drain will keep him alive. And at the very least, when using this character, Inheritance Shards, when it is the hollow IT quest, you will be going up against Free Spawn which lucky for him he's immune to so overall what do i think about his character again as already displayed i think he's a very solid character with some massive glaring issues i'm not gonna lie to you lads. i do think that sa2 while it is a strength it definitely is a weakness more so in guild quest for example because it does no damage and the fact that again once more he doesn't inflict stats on that sa2 i would have really loved to see that get changed because it would have made him significantly better in it while i do value his survivability his damage output isn't anything super insane it's good enough don't get me wrong it's 
it's definitely good enough. Uh, but with that SA2 being on the cooldown, it actually is. Even with that extra bit of recharge that you have built into the character, you are a lot of times waiting a couple seconds to use a strong attack too. Personally, I didn't really mind it, but it is definitely an issue depending on your playstyle. Personally, what I would have loved to see change in this character was that SA1. Because the SA1 is basically the attack you're going to be using a lot. And the SA1 isn't really compensating for the SA2's super long cooldown. Again, I don't think it's a problem. I don't think it ruins the character. But he could have been better had he been given a better SA1. Because he really does need it with that super long cooldown SA2. So overall, again, I think he's a very solid character. Personally, I actually really like the way he turned out. Visually, he looks great. His soul animation is definitely one of the best in the game, in my opinion. Definitely for this year, at the very least. I think he's a really cool character. He has a lot of usage. I enjoyed myself when playing with him, but it really comes down to if you really like his gameplay. For me, if I did pull him, I would use him a lot. But unfortunately, I'm stuck with fifth anniversary Ichigo. And that's not a bad thing. Fifth anniversary Ichigo is busted. He's amazing. But I'm tired of using him. I wanted to use a new character like this, Barragon, because he definitely does look a fun character. But if you're not a Barragon fan, and you have someone like 5th Anniversary Ichigo, at least with some dupes invested into him, you probably really don't have a need for this particular character. But that doesn't make him bad, he just has a few issues that are stopping him from being, you know, top 10 character in the game at the very least. But I said, that was my opinion on this new Barragon Tyrant Aspiration version. In the comments below, let me know what you like to think about this character. I'm curious to know how you feel about him, and I'll see you next time. Peace.